Headphones have become a ubiquitous item in our everyday life. You can spot them in the train, cafe, office etc. You might own one pair of it yourself. Owning a headphone could mean a different thing for different people. For some, it acts as a fashion statement. It's easy to spot these people, the headphone are almost always just hanging around the neck. In the 1880s, telephone operators used a somewhat simplified version of modern headphones. It only has a single earpiece and had to be connected to a contraption together with a mouthpiece for transmission. That contraption itself weighs between 6 to 11 pounds and has to be rested on the operator's shoulder. Nathaniel Baldwin made the first modern headphones to earpiece with a headband, by hand in his kitchen. It was sold to the Navy as a piece of radio equipment. But because Baldwin were making them in his kitchen, the production rate were very low, around 10 at a time. Hence, the Navy wanted to move him out of his kitchen at Utah and into a bigger and more professional facilities. However, because Baldwin was a polygamist, he refused to move out of Utah. Another company, Wireless Specialty Apparatus Company, decided to capitalize on this and worked with Baldwin to manufacture the headphone in a factory in Utah. But on one condition, they could never increase the price of the headphone sold to the Navy. Side trivia. Baldwin dismissed the idea of patenting his headphones because he felt that it was demeaning to him to patent something so trivial. Such idealist. The reason to why headphones are sometimes referred to as cans. Cans was actually a slang used in the past for earpiece or for anything that produces sounds and had to be listened to by putting them to the ear. It's also a term that are used sparingly by hipsters who googled for an easier spelling for headphones. John C. Koss, the father of stereo headphones, were not just an excellent inventor. He was also a genius marketer. He embraced celebrity endorsement of his product and had promptly take over the headphones market in the 60s, 70s. So it was a match made in heaven when Koss Electronics decided to team up with the biggest stars in that era to come up with Beatlephone. If you are a Beatles mega fan, you will want to own this. Headphones were not meant to be portable. In the 70s, headphones were used for home listening of records. Hence, Portability of the headphone wasn't an immediate concern for headphone manufacturers. The headphones could weigh from 1 to 2 kilograms. To get a relative feel of the heaviness, a Beats headphone weigh in at just 215 grams. It was only until Sony released the Walkman, causing a surge in demand for portable headphones and also creating the next momentum shift in headphone history. Noise cancellation technology was created because of noisy airplane engine. Found of Bose Corporation, Dr. Amar A. Bose were on a flight home from Zurich when he tried on a newfangled piece of airflight entertainment. However, he was deeply disappointed when all he could hear were the overwhelmingly loud air engine noise. According to legend, he immediately flipped out his notepad and started drafting his ideas for a noise-canceling headphones. When the aircraft landed, he had already sketched out the concept that will bring Bose truckloads of wealth and fame. The noise-canceling headphones were targeted for the aviation industry initially. In 1980s, airlines chose to reduce fuel consumption by reducing weight of the aircraft. So interestingly enough, they decide to cost save by removal of the insulation surrounding the cockpit. This resulted in extremely loud noises within the cockpit and there were concerns that it will cause hearing damage for the crew members in the long run. Bose's noise-canceling prototype headphones were used for one of those flights and it was a major success. It was only in 2000 that Bose tweaked the noise-canceling headphones for the mainstream market. Quiet Comfort Series was born and from then on, Bose had truly become the iconic gold standard for noise-cancellation headphones. Are smartphones and tablets computers? Yes, smartphones and tablets are indeed considered computers. A computer is really any device that accepts input from a user performs calculations on that input, and provides an output to the user. Usually, with a smartphone and tablet input is provided using a touch screen interface and the output is seen on a screen. Smartphones and tablets have many similarities to traditional desktop PCs. They have many of the same capabilities. They have some key differences. Similarities Desktop computers, laptops, smartphones, and tablets have a lot in common. They all contain a CPU, memory, display functionality, and use an operating system that runs programs, apps, to perform different functions. Differences Input device One of the biggest differences between smartphones, tablets, and computers is their input device. 
Most traditional computers use a keyboard and a mouse, whereas smartphones and tablets use a touchscreen interface. Software Another big difference is software compatibility. Although many software applications work on all platforms, desktop and laptop computers usually run Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, or Linux operating systems. These systems are not compatible with tablets and smartphones, so your favorite computer programs may not be available on a tablet or smartphone. Hardware and peripherals. Also, hardware devices, like printers, digital cameras, MP3 players, and external hard drives, are not compatible, which means without a computer, these devices cannot work. IGTV vs. SIG Stories, What's the Difference? Table of Contents What is IGTV? What are Instagram Stories? What's the difference between IGTV and Instagram Stories? More about IGTV More about Stories Should I use IGTV or Instagram Stories? What is IGTV? IGTV is Instagram's long-form video platform. While a typical video post on Instagram is limited to one minute, IGTV posts can be up to an hour long. IGTV was launched in June 2018 as a direct competitor to YouTube. In contrast to YouTube, IGTV allows both horizontal and vertical video formats. IGTV can be downloaded as a separate standalone app or accessed within the Instagram app. Instagram Stories is a feature within the Instagram app where users can post short vertical videos that last for only 24 hours. Instagram Stories were launched in August 2016 as a response to the rising popularity of Snapchat Stories. Stories are accessible by taping the circle around a user's profile picture, either on their profile or at the top of the home feed. Stories can be modified with filters, text, and stickers. What's the difference between IGTV and Instagram Stories? Length Instagram Stories are a maximum of 15 seconds long, whereas IGTV videos can be up to an hour long. Lifespan Instagram Stories are only viewable for 24 hours unless they are added to your highlights. IGTV videos exist permanently on your IGTV channel. Video Format Instagram Stories only permit full-screen vertical videos, while IGTV allows both vertical and horizontal video formats. Separate App Instagram Stories are only accessible from within the Instagram app, whereas IGTV can be accessed either from within Instagram or through the separate, standalone IGTV app. Engagement Instagram Stories do not have likes or comments. Instead, they have reactions and replies sent as direct messages. Instagram stories are shareable only via DMs. On IGTV, you like and comment on videos and share them with a link, just like you would on regular Instagram video posts. More about IGTV. Video length. Videos must be at least one minute long. The maximum length your video can be is 15 minutes when uploading from a mobile device. 60 minutes when uploading from the web. Video file type. Videos must be in MP4 file format. Video resolution and size. You can upload a vertical video with an aspect ratio of 916 or a horizontal video with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Videos should have a minimum frame rate of 30 FPS, frames per second, and minimum resolution of 720 pixels. The maximum file size for videos that are 10 minutes or less is 650 megabytes. The maximum file size for videos up to 60 minutes is 3.6 gigabytes. Cover photo size. The recommended size for cover photos is 420px by 654px, or 1 to 1.55 ratio. Right now, you can edit your cover photo after you've uploaded it. More about stories. 
active story. Delete, with this option the user deletes the video or the photo that is in the story. Save video, image, saves the video or the photo to the user's device. Send to, with this option the user sends a story in a direct message. Share as a post, with this option the user posts the story to his feed. Tag business partner, creators, public figures and publishers can tag a business partner when they post branded content. This means that these accounts have a commercial relationship with the business partner that's mentioned, and that they were compensated in some way for the post. Copy link, with this option the user copies the URL of the story. Share to, with this option the user can send the story to other apps for example, Google Drive, Facebook, Messenger, Messages, Gmail, Outlook, OneDrive. Story setting, here the user can hide the story from some users, allow messages replay enable or disable save to gallery or archive, change the options for sharing. The user can see who viewed the story and the number of viewers and add the story to highlights. After 24 hours, the stories are automatically saved in your stories archive. In the archive you can delete the story, save the photo or the video from the story to your device, share as a post, add to highlights, share to your story, share to your as close as friends. But you can't see who viewed your story. Should I use IGTV or Instagram Stories? If you're trying to create high-quality long-form content that's permanently accessible on one channel, use IGTV. For example, if you already create content for YouTube, you can also post it to IGTV. If you're looking for a fun, lightweight way to boost engagement with your brand, you should be using Instagram Stories. Experiment with both formats to see what works best for your audience. When we post something on the social network Instagram, we have the option to share the posted post on Facebook, Twitter, other applications or NDM. The two options that Instagram gives us are, post to other apps and share to. What is the difference between the two? The first option, e-post to other apps, allows the uploaded photo or the uploaded video to be shared on the social network's Facebook. Twitter or Tumblr in the form of a photo or video along with the given description or hashtags that are located below the video or image. On the other hand, the second option, eShare to allows you to share the post in the form of a link. Here the option can be shared with other applications, Google Drive, Gmail, copy link, sharing via Bluetooth, etc. MMS, what is MMS? Comparing MMS with SMS. The first MMS capable phones. Maximum message site. File types, what is MMS? MMS stands for Multimedia Messaging Service and is one of two standard forms of mobile messaging, SMS is the other. MMS supports the transmission of various media types, text, picture, audio, video, or a combination of all four. Comparing MMS with SMS. The biggest difference between the two mobile messaging technologies involves the unique capabilities, whereas SMS is reserved for sending 160 character text messages, MMS can send much longer multimedia messages. The first MMS capable phones. The first MMS-capable phones were introduced around 2002 in conjunction with the first GSM network. The Sony Ericsson T68i is widely believed to be the first MMS-capable cell phone, while many more hit North American markets beginning in 2004 and 2005. Maximum Message Size The maximum message size, along with the attachments, is generally limited to 300 kilobytes, MMS 1.2, but recently the MMS 1.3 standard has allowed for a maximum size of 600 kilobytes. 
Wireless carriers however can impose their own size restrictions. Whenever possible we will try and state the MMS version supported by the individual handsets in our database, file types. You can upload the following file types, GIF, PNG, JPG, JPEG, TXT, PDF, MP4, VCF, and animated GIF, SD, Secure Digital, cards are the oldest, least used and limited to 2 GB of storage. SDHC, High Capacity, cards can store up to 32 GB of data, while SDXC, Extended Capacity, cards can store up to 2 TB, 2000. In monaural sound one single channel is used. It can be reproduced through several speakers but all speakers are still reproducing the same copy of the signal. In stereophonic sound more channels are used, typically two. You can use two different channels and make one feed one speaker and the second channel feed a second speaker, which is the most common stereo setup. This is used to create directionality, perspective, space. The Telex messaging network comes out of the early period of Germany's Third Reich. Telex starts as a way to distribute military messages, but soon becomes a worldwide network of both official and commercial text messaging that will persist in some countries into the 2000s. Telex uses teleprinters, which date back to the 1910s for use in telegraphy. But instead of using pricey dedicated telegraph lines, the Telex system connects those teleprinters to each other over voice telephone lines routed by modified telephone switches. Wireless versions of Telex soon connect remote regions of the developing world. Belgian Paul Otelet has a modest goal, collect, organize, and share all the world's knowledge. Otelet had co-created a massive search engine starting in the early 1900s. His mundanum now combines enhanced card catalogs with 16 million entries photos, documents, microfilm, and more. He is working on integrating telegraphy and multiple media, from sound recordings to television. In the 1930s British writer H.G. Wells and American scientist Vannevar Bush are advancing similar goals, Wells with his world brain writings and Bush with the Memex, a sort of microfilm-based web browser. These approaches to organizing information differ but all share key features of today's web, including automated cross-references, which we call hyperlinks. Called the Model K Adder because he built it on his kitchen table, this simple demonstration circuit provides proof of concept for applying Boolean logic to the design of computers resulting in construction of the relay-based Model I complex calculator in 1939. That same year in Germany, engineer Konrad Suse built his Z2 computer, also using telephone company relays. Built by Westinghouse, the relay-based electro-robot responds to the rhythm of voice commands and delivers wisecracks pre-recorded on 78 revolutions per minute records. It appeared at the World's Fair, and it could move its head and arms. And even smoked cigarettes. David Packard and Bill Hewlett found their company in a Palo Alto, California garage. Their first product, the HP 200A audio oscillator rapidly became a popular piece of test equipment for engineers. Walt Disney Pictures ordered date of the 200B model to test recording equipment and speaker systems for the 12 specially equipped theaters that showed the movie Fantasia in 1940. In 1939, Bell Telephone Laboratories completes this calculator, designed by scientist George Stibitz. In 1940, Stibitz demonstrated the CNC at an American Mathematical Society conference held at Dartmouth College. Stibitz stunned the group by performing calculations remotely on the CNC, located in New York City, using a teletype terminal connected via to New York over special telephone lines. This is likely the first example of remote access computing. The Z3 an early computer built by German engineer Konrad Suse working in complete isolation from developments elsewhere, 
uses 2,300 relays, performs floating point binary arithmetic, and has a 22 bit word length. The Z3 was used for aerodynamic calculations but was destroyed in a bombing raid on Berlin in late 1943. Suze later supervised a reconstruction of the Z3 in the 1960s, which is currently on display at the Deutsches Museum in Munich. Isaac Asimov publishes the science fiction short story Liar. In the May issue of Astounding Science Fiction. In it, he introduced the three laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Built as an electromechanical means of decrypting Nazi Enigma-based military communications during World War II, the British bomb is conceived of by computer pioneer Alan Turing and Harold Keane of the British Tabulating Machine Company. Hundreds of Allied bombs were built in order to determine the daily rotor start positions of Enigma cipher machines, which in turn allowed the Allies to decrypt German messages. The basic idea for bombs came from Polish code breaker Marian Rijski's 1938 Bomba. After successfully demonstrating a proof of concept prototype in 1939, Professor John Vincent Atanasoff receives funds to build a full scale machine at Iowa State College, now University. The machine was designed and built by Atanasoff and graduate student Clifford Berry between 1939 and 1942. The ABC was at the center of a patent dispute related to the invention of the computer, which was resolved in 1973 when it was shown that ENIAC co-designer John Mockley had seen the ABC shortly after it became functional. The legal result was a landmark. A. Tonisoff was declared the originator of several basic computer ideas, but the computer as a concept was declared unpatentable and thus freely open to all. A full-scale working replica of the ABC was completed in 1997, proving that the ABC machine functioned as A. Tonisoff had claimed. The replica is currently on display at the Computer History Museum. The U.S. Army asked Bell Laboratories to design a machine to assist in testing its M9 gun director, a type of analog computer that aims large guns to their targets. Mathematician George Stibitz recommends using a relay-based calculator for the project. The result was the Relay Interpolator, later called the Bell Labs Model 2. The Relay Interpolator used 440 relays, and since it was programmable by paper tape, was used for other applications following the war. Kurt Hertz Stark was an Austrian engineer who worked in his family's manufacturing business until he was arrested by the Nazis in 1943. While imprisoned at Buchenwald concentration camp for the rest of World War II, he refines his pre-war design of a calculator featuring a modified version of Leibniz's step drum design. After the war, Hertz Stark's Kurt made history as the smallest all-mechanical, four-function calculator ever built. Two scientists, Warren S. McCulloch and Walter H. Pitts, published the groundbreaking paper A Logical Calculus of the Ideas Imminent in Nervous Activity. The paper quickly became a foundational work in the study of artificial neural networks and has many applications in artificial intelligence research. In it McCulloch and Pitts described a simplified neural network architecture for intelligence, and while the neurons they described were greatly simplified compared to biological neurons, the model they proposed was enhanced and improved upon by subsequent generations of researchers. Designed by British engineer Tommy Flowers the Colossus is designed to break the complex Lawrence ciphers used by the Nazis during World War II. A total of 10 colossi were delivered, each using as many as 2,500 vacuum tubes. A series of pulleys transported continuous rolls of punched paper tape containing possible solutions to a particular code. Colossus reduced the time to break Lawrence messages from weeks to hours. 
Most historians believe that the use of Colossus machines significantly shortened the war by providing evidence of enemy intentions and beliefs. The machine's existence was not made public until the 1970s, conceived by Harvard physics professor Howard Aiken, and designed and built by IBM. The Harvard Mark I is a room-sized, real A-based calculator. The machine had a 50-foot-long camshaft running the length of machine that synchronized the machine's thousands of component parts and used 3,500 relays. The Mark I produced mathematical tables but was soon superseded by electronic stored program computers. In a widely circulated paper, mathematician John von Neumann outlines the architecture of a stored program computer, including electronic storage of programming information and data which eliminates the need for more clumsy methods of programming such as plug boards, punched cards and paper. Hungarian-born von Neumann demonstrated prodigious expertise in hydrodynamics, ballistics, meteorology, game theory, statistics, and the use of mechanical devices for computation. After the war, he concentrated on the development of Princeton's Institute for Advanced Studies computer, the word bug, when applied to computers means some form of error or failure. On September 9th, Grace Hopper records what she jokingly called the first actual computer bug, in this case, a moth stuck between relay contacts of the Harvard Mark II computer, with side-by-side -side screens, the imaginary Memex desk is meant to let a user compare and create links between microfilm documents, somewhat like today's clickable web links and bookmarks. The idea is that people will continually build on each other's associative trails through the world's knowledge, helping tackle the growing problem of information overload. The Memex is the brainchild of top U.S. scientist Van Ever Bush, an analog computing pioneer who had helped oversee development of the atomic bomb. The basic mechanism he suggests is a microfilm automatic selector similar to those built by optics pioneer Emanuel Goldberg in the early 1930s. Bush publicizes the Memex concept in 1945 articles in the Atlantic Monthly and Life. Conrad Suze begins work on Planck Alcal, Plan Calculus, the first algorithmic programming language, with the goal of creating the theoretical preconditions for the solution of general problems. Seven years earlier, Suze had developed and built the world's first binary digital computer, the Z1. He completed the first fully functional program-controlled electromechanical digital computer, the Z3, in 1941. Only the Z4, the most sophisticated of his creations, survived World War II, era 1101. Era 1101 later renamed Univac 1101, was a computer system designed and built by Engineering Research Associates, ERA, in the early 1950s and continued to be sold by the Remington Rand Corporation after that company later purchased Era. Stored 1 million bits on its magnetic drum, I, robot. Science fiction short stories or essays by American writer Isaac Asimov Magnetic Drummed Memory Atlas, completed in 1950. Atlas used magnetic drum memory, which stored information on the outside of a rotating cylinder coated with ferromagnetic material and circled by reed, right heads in fixed positions, Xyrac. Australia's first computer, the Xyrac. Ski. The robot squirrel uses two light sensors and two contact switches to hunt for nuts, actually, tennis balls, and drag them to its nest. Univac Tape Drive Univac introduces the Univac Tape Drive for the Univac I computer. Magnetic Tape Magnetic tape allows for inexpensive mass storage of information and is a key part of the computer revolution. The IBM 726 was an early and important practical high-speed magnetic tape system for electronic computers. Magnetic Core Memory In 1953, MIT's Whirlwind becomes the first computer to use magnetic core memory. Core memory is made up of tiny donuts made of magnetic material strung on wires into a grid. Each core stored a bit, magnetized one way for a zero, and the other way for a one. 
the wires could both detect and change the state of a bit. IBM establishes the 650. IBM establishes the 650 as its first mass-produced computer, with the company selling 450 in just one year. Spinning at 12,500 revolutions per minute, the 650's magnetic data storage drum allowed much faster access to stored information than other drum-based machines. Direct Keyboard Input to Computers At MIT, researchers begin experimenting with direct keyboard input to computers, a precursor to today's normal mode of operation. Typically, computer users of the time fed their programs into a computer using punched cards or paper tape. Tridec the Tridec, for transistor digital computer or transistorized airborne digital computer, was the first transistorized computer in the USA, completed in 1954. Digital Phone Line Phone companies develop digital transmission for internal uses, specifically to put more calls on each of the main lines connecting their own switching centers. By 1958, this produces the T1 standard still used in North America. By the 1980s, phone companies will be leasing digital lines to commercial customers. In 1956, the first hard drive to be sold commercially was invented by IBM. This hard drive, shipped with the Ramak 305 system, was the size of two refrigerators and weighed about a ton. It held 5 megabytes of data, at a cost of $10,000 per megabyte. Cobol. A team drawn from several computer manufacturers and the Pentagon developed COBOL Naval Tactical Data System. The U.S. Navy Tactical Data System uses computers to integrate and display shipboard radar, sonar and communications data. This real-time information system began operating in the early 1960s. In October 1961, the Navy tested the NTDS on the USS Soros Kinney Carrier and the USS King and USS Mayan frigates. After being successfully used for decades, NTDS was phased out in favor of the newer Aegis system in the 1980s. CRAM Card Random Access Memory CRAM, is introduced. The NCR 315 and several later NCR mainframes used this mechanically complex magnetic cram for secondary storage. The Mylar cards were suspended from rods that selected and dropped one at a time for processing. Each cram deck of 256 cards recorded about 5.5 megabytes. ASCII ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange permits machines from different manufacturers to exchange data. The ASCII code consisted of 128 unique strings of ones and zeros. Each sequence represented a letter of the English alphabet, an Arabic numeral, an assortment of punctuation marks and symbols, or a function such as a carriage return. ASCII can only represent up to 256 symbols, and for this reason many other languages are better supported by Unicode which has the ability to represent over 100,000 symbols. Tros. IBM introduces Transformer Read-Only Storage TROS, with the arrival of the IBM 360. Tros modules preceded solid-state ROM chips, and each bit of this read-only memory for microcode was a little magnetic transformer. Punches in the Mylar strips controlled whether current flowed through the transformer or around it representing a binary 0 or a 1, IBM 1360. The IBM 1360 photo digital storage system is installed at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. The system could read and write up to a trillion bits of information, the first such system in the world. The 1360 used thin strips of film on which were written data created by an electron beam and a wet photographic development process. The system used sophisticated error correction and a pneumatic robot to move the film strips to and from a storage unit. Only five were built. The RS-232C Standard The RS-232C Standard for Communications is adopted by the Electronic Industries Association. The standard permits computers and peripheral devices to transmit information serially, that is, one bit at a time, semiconductor memory. 
In a departure from using magnetic core memory technology, IBM introduces the System 370 Model 145 mainframe computer, the company's first all-semiconductor memory computer. The Model 145 could store an equivalent amount of data in half the space, compared to a computer using core memory, Pascal. The Pascal programming language, named after Blaise Pascal, a French physicist, mathematician and inventor turned philosopher, is introduced by Professor Niklas Wirth, Computer Space. Computer with the Game Space War. HP 35. The world's first scientific pocket calculator. Intel 4004. The first microprocessor. The first email. The first email was sent by Ray Tomlinson to himself in 1971. Queen's first email. Five years later, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom sends out an email on March 26 from the Royal Signals and Radar Establishment, RSRE, in Malvern as a part of a demonstration of networking technology, C. The C programming language is released. Altair 8800. A small firm named MITS made the first personal computer, the Altair. This computer, which used Intel Corporation's 8000 data microprocessor, was developed in 1974, LaserDisc. LaserDisc is a home video format and the first commercial optical disc storage medium, initially licensed, sold unmarketed as MCA DiscoVision in the United States in 1978. Bubble Memory Intel introduces its 4 megabits bubble memory array. A few magnetic bubble memories reached the market in the 1970s and 1980s and were used in niche markets like video games and machine tool controllers. The introduction of cheaper, faster and higher density memory solutions rendered bubble memory obsolete. Each silver square, or bubble, on this board stored 1 megabit, the first commercial floppy disks developed in the late 1960s, were 8 inches, 200 millimeters, in diameter, they became commercially available in 1971 as a component of IBM products and then were sold separately beginning in 1972 by Memorex and others. ST5065 megabytes HDD Seagate Technology creates the first hard disk drive for microcomputers, the ST506. The disk held 5 megabytes of data. Osborne 1 The Osborne 1 is the first commercially successful portable microcomputer, released on April 3, 1981 by Osborne Computer Corporation. It weighs 10.7 kilograms, 24.5 pounds, cost 1,795 US dollars, and runs the CP. M2.2 operating system, 3 and a half inch floppy disk drive. Sony introduces the first 3 and a half inch floppy drives and diskettes in 1981. IBM's first PC. IBM's brand recognition, along with a massive marketing campaign, ignites the fast growth of the personal computer market with the announcement of its own personal computer, PC. The first IBM PC formerly known as the IBM Model 5150, was based on a 4.77 MHz Intel 8088 microprocessor and used Microsoft's MS-DOS operating system, Lisa Computer. Lisa is the first commercial personal computer with a graphical user interface, GUI. CD-ROM. Able to hold 550 megabytes of pre-recorded data. See the ROMs grow out of music compact discs, CDs. The CD was developed by Sony and Philips in 1982 for distributing music, MIDI. The Musical Instrument Digital Interface, MIDI, is introduced at the first North American Music Manufacturers, NAMM, show in Los Angeles. MIDI is an industry standard electronic interface that links computers with electronic musical instruments. Flash memory. Fujio Masuoka invents flash memory in 1984 while working for Toshiba. C++. 
the C++ programming language emerges as the dominant object-oriented language in the computer industry when Jarn Strastrup publishes the book The C++ Programming Language. 8046 Microprocessor Intel released the 80486 microprocessor and the i860 RISC, coprocessor chip, each of which contained more than 1 million transistors. C++ You know that blue Twitter bird that's always popping up these days? Well, the little guy's got a name. It's Larry. Larry the Bird. Larry the Bird is named after former NBA basketball player Larry Bird of Boston Celtics fame. What does the number part of my video's resolution actually mean? The resolutions you see 360p, 480p, 720p, or 1080p represent the number of horizontal lines a video has from top to bottom. So, a 480p video is made up of 480 lines stacked one on top of another, with each line being 852 pixels wide. In other words, a 480p video has a resolution of 852 times 480 pixels. For comparison, a 720p HD video has 720 lines that are each 1280 pixels wide, meaning that it is more than twice as sharp as a the same video at 480p and can be viewed on a much larger screen. Here's a rundown of the different kinds of resolutions you can use, and how to choose the one that's right for your project. 360p Videos at 360p are well suited to smartphones and other mobile devices since they use up less data, but may appear a bit blurry on larger screens. 480p DVDs clock in at 480p, so if you're looking to burn a DVD, this resolution will give your disc the highest quality allowed by any DVD burner or disc. A 480p video will also play well on most laptop and desktop monitors, and smaller TVs. 720p True high definition starts at 720p, and this is the image resolution at which many HD television channels broadcast. An HD 720p Animoto video is crisp, sharp, and looks great on most displays. 1080p For an even higher resolution, you can download your videos at 1080p, another favorite for HD television stations. We recommend this resolution for sharing on social media or for showing videos on larger screens and TVs, since it'll give your audience the highest possible quality display, with crystal clear playback. 2K 2K resolution is a generic term for display devices or content having horizontal resolution of approximately 2000 pixels. Digital Cinema Initiatives, DCI, defines 2K resolution standard as 2048 times 1080. In the movie projection industry, digital cinema initiatives is the dominant standard for 2K output. 4K or Ultra HD The most common resolution for new TVs is 4K. Since it's unfamiliar to many people, it's also the source of the vast majority of the confusion about TV resolution. The short version is this, when it comes to TVs, 4K and Ultra HD, or UHD, are referring to the same resolution. Those TVs, along with Ultra HD Blu-ray, and nearly all UHD streaming content from Netflix, Amazon, and others, is 3,840x2,160 resolution. 8. 8K is a higher resolution than 4K and that's it. 1080p screens have a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. 4K screens double those numbers to 3840 by 2160 and quadruple the number of pixels. 8K doubles the numbers again, to a resolution of 7680 by 4320. That's four times the number of pixels as 4K, which means it's 16 times that of a 1080p TV. What can you do if your YouTube account don't have a channel? If you created a YouTube account, but you don't have a channel you can like or dislike videos, add them to queue, add to watch later, click on not interested, click on don't recommend channel or report video, report user, block user, report the channel art or the profile picture of some users and subscribe to a channel. But you can't comment on videos, create playlists, upload videos. What is the ideal size for a YouTube thumbnail? 
The ideal size for a YouTube thumbnail is 1280 by 720 pixels. Why this size? These dimensions belong to the 16, 9 format. If your thumbnail you create belongs to the 4, 3 format, YouTube will convert it to a resolution of 1280 by 720, or 16, 9. With the automatic conversion that will be done in the YouTube platform, some parts that are in the lower or upper part of the thumbnail, will be hidden, that is will not be visible. So, if the design of your YouTube thumbnail is 1280 by 720, all the components that go into it will be visible. Windows 10 Editions Windows 10 Home It is the main edition of Windows 10 which is available in all desktop PCs, laptops, tablets, hybrid, 2-inch minus 1. This edition contains all new Windows 10 features except some advanced features such as Group Policy Management, BitLocker, Remote Desktop, Client Hyper-V, etc. Windows 10 Pro Windows 10 Pro Edition contains a few advanced features which are not available in Windows 10 Home Edition such as Group Policy Management, BitLocker, Remote Desktop, Client Hyper-V. Devices and Apps Management and Windows Update for Business Service. Basically Windows 10 Pro Edition is useful for small businesses. Windows 10 Mobile Windows 10 Mobile is edition that is available for mobile phones and small tablets having screen sizes under 8 inches. Windows 10 Enterprise Windows 10 Enterprise Edition is available for medium and large sized organizations. It contains all Windows 10 Pro Edition features along with some advanced features such as Windows To Go Creator, App Locker, Direct Access, Credential Guard, Device Guard, Operating System Deployment and Comprehensive Device and App Management. Windows 10 Enterprise LTSB, Long-Term Servicing Branch. It contains all Windows 10 Enterprise Edition features but doesn't contain any modern, Metro, app-like store. Xbox, Cortana, Microsoft Edge, etc. It also comes with classic calculator and Windows Photo Viewer programs which are not present in any other Windows 10 edition. Windows 10 Mobile Enterprise It is a special version of Windows 10 Enterprise Edition developed for smartphones and small tablets. Similar to Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. Windows 10 Mobile Enterprise is also be available to volume licensing customers only. Windows 10 Education This edition is available for schools and has been designed to meet the requirements of school staff, administrators, teachers and students. This edition contains all features of Windows 10 Enterprise Edition except long-term servicing branch, Windows 10 IAT Core. For industry devices like ATMs, retail point of sale, handheld terminals and industrial robotics, Windows 10 and and not labeled N for Europe and not for Korea, these editions include all the base features of the operating system but without media feature pack, Windows 10 S. Windows 10 S mode is a Windows 10 operating system, OS, configuration that, according to Microsoft, delivers predictable performance and quality. However, a device with S mode enabled can only run apps that have been downloaded from the Microsoft Store. Windows 10 Version History Version 1057 The original version of Windows 10, was released in July 2015. It carries the build number 10.0.10240. An updated start menu. The introduction of Cortana, a virtual assistant, to the desktop version of Windows. A continuum mode that allows users to switch between desktop mode and tablet mode. Action Center, which includes notifications and quick access to settings. A new web browser, Microsoft Edge, that replaces Internet Explorer as the default browser in Windows. Improved multitasking, including virtual desktops. Many updated built-in apps. Version 1511 Is the first major update to Windows 10 and the second version of the operating system? 
It carries the build number 10.0.10586. Pre-installed Skype video, messaging, and phone apps. Tab previews and syncing in Microsoft Edge. Visual and functional tweaks. Version 1607, Anniversary Update. Also known as version 1607, is the second major update to Windows 10. It carries the build number 10.0.14393. This release of Windows 10 is supported for users of the current branch, CB, current branch for business, CBB, and long-term support branch, LTSB. Version 1703, Creators Update Is the third major update to Windows 1 it carries the build number 10.0.16299 New features for Microsoft Defender AV in Windows 10, version 1703 include Updates to how the block at first sight feature can be configured The ability to specify the level of cloud protection Microsoft Defender Antivirus Protection in the Windows Defender Security Center app. Version 1709, Fall Creators Update. The Windows 10 Fall Creators Update is the fourth major update to Windows 10. It carries the build number 10.0.16299. Includes a slew of new features and tweaks, but Microsoft is touting some key additions, including a new interface design using Microsoft's new Fluent Design System, My People, OneDrive File On Demand, Windows Defender's Controlled Folder Access, Settings Tweaks, New Cross-Device Experiences, New Version of Microsoft Edge, and a lot more. Version 1803 April 2018 Update The Windows October 10, 2018 Update It carries the build number 10.0.17763 Windows 10 in S mode Office 365 Ransomware Detection New DISM commands have been added to manage feature updates Version 1809, October 2018 Update The Windows October 10, 2018 Update, it carries the build number 10.0.17763. Setup Diagram Version 1.4 is released. Windows Defender Application Guard Improvements Windows Defender Firewall now supports Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL, Processes. Registry Editor Improvements Faster sign-in to a Windows 10 shared PC Version 1903, May 2019 Update The Windows May 10, 2019 Update, is the seventh major update to Windows 10 and it carries the build number 10.0.18362 A new light theme Separation of search and Cortana in the taskbar. Windows Sandbox, not available in Windows 10 Home. Ability to pause updates for 35 days or under, including. Windows 10 Home. New default wallpaper. Recommended troubleshooting. Notifications hidden while in full screen. Version 1909. November 2019 Update The Windows November 10, 2019 Update is the 8th major update to Windows 10. It carries the build number 10.0.18363. Ability to create events from the calendar flyout on the taskbar. Improvements to notification management, including thumbnails demonstrating notification banners and the action center in application notification settings, and the ability to access per application notification settings from their displays in Action Center. The Start Menu's navigation sidebar icons expand into a drawer with text labels when the cursor is hovered over them. 
Support for using third-party digital assistance from the lock screen. OneDrive integration with File Explorer's search. Version 2004, May 2020 update. Is the ninth major update to Windows 10, it carries the build number 10.0.19041. Faster and easier access to Bluetooth settings and pairing. Improved K-Emojis. Virtual desktops are now renameable. Deact X12 Ultimate. Introducing a chat-based UI for Cortana. Greater integration with Android smartphones on the Your Phone app. Windows subsystem for Linux 2. Ability to use Windows Hello without the need for a password. Ability to use Windows Hello Pin while in safe mode. Cloud download option to reset Windows. Accessibility improvements. Dark mode. Version 20H2, October 2020. There's not a lot new, and that's big news. In about you can copy your system info. The new Microsoft Edge is now built in. Access your Samsung phone's Android apps on your PC. New theme for the Start menu. Alt Plus tab shows Edge browser tabs by default. This update will came in October and carries the build number 10.0.0.19042. Codenames. 1507, Threshold 1. 1511, Threshold 2. 1607, Redstone 1. 1703, Redstone 2. 1709, Redstone 3. 1803, Redstone 4. 1809, Redstone 5. 1903-19H1. 1909-19H2. 2004-20H1. 20H2 20H2 The History of Microsoft Office and its Versions November 19, 1990 Microsoft Office for Windows is released otherwise known as Office 1.0. Office 1.0 contains Word 1.1 Excel 2.0 and PowerPoint 2.0. In the same year as this release, Microsoft become as the first company to exceed $1 billion in sales in one year. August 30, 1992 Microsoft Office 3.0 is released on CD-ROM including Word 2.0C, Excel 4.0A, PowerPoint 3.0 and Microsoft Mail. This hugely popular version of Microsoft Office would later be rebranded from the Microsoft Office 3.0 to Office 92. June 2, 1994 Microsoft Office 4.3 is released featuring Word 6.0, Excel 5.0, PowerPoint 4.0, and Mail 3.2, plus Access 2.0 and the Pro version. 4.3 is the last 16-bit version and the last to support Windows 3.x, Windows NT 3.1 and Windows NT 3.5. August 30, 1995 Office 95 is released coinciding with the release of Windows 95 operating system. Works only on Windows 95 NT 3.51 or higher. This is the first Office version to have the same version number for all major component products, Word, Excel, PowerPoint etc. December 30, 1997 Office 97 released, featuring Word 97, EXCEL 97, PowerPoint 97 and Mail 97. Office 97 was published on a CD-ROM as well as on a set of 3.5-inch floppy disks. It became Y2K safe with the service release 2. January 27, 1999 Office 2000 is released, featuring Word, PowerPoint and Excel 2000. This was the latest version to support Windows 95 and the last Office version that didn't include product activation and was not covered by Office Genuine Advantage. May 31, 2001 Office XP is released, featuring Word, Excel and PowerPoint 2002. This is the last version to support Windows 98, 
Windows Me and Windows NT 4.0. It also features improved support for working in restricted accounts in Windows 2000 slash XP. November 17, 2003 Office 2003 is released featuring Word, Excel and PowerPoint 2003. This is the last version to support Windows 2000 and the first Microsoft Office to introduce Windows XP style icons which would be common in future editions of Office. January 30, 2007 Office 2007 is released featuring 2007 version of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Office 2007 is broadly released alongside Windows Vista and contains an entirely new graphical user interface referred to as the Fluent User Interface. June 15, 2010 Office 2010 is released, featuring user interface updates, extended file format support and a changed user experience. Its first version to ship in both 32 and 64 bits and is the debut of free online versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. June 28, 2011 Microsoft Office 365 offers secure. Anywhere access to email and calendars, office web apps instant messaging, conference and file sharing. Office 365 is a cloud-based application, making it easy to communicate, create and share in the cloud. January 29, 2013 A new, cleaned up interface, a radical pricing model and seamless Office SkyDrive integration are the key features in Office 2013. September 22, 2015 Microsoft Office 2016 The ribbons of the apps have colors, green is for Excel, blue for Word, red for PowerPoint. New features, new features in the Windows release include the ability to create, open, edit, and save files in the cloud straight from the desktop. A new search tool for commands available in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, Access, Visio, and Project Name Tell Me. More send as options in Word and PowerPoint, and CO authoring in real time with users connected to Office Online. September 24, 2018 Microsoft Office 2019 New features for Word Latex equation support You asked for it. You can now create math equations using latex syntax. New features for PowerPoint. Add motion with morph. Make smooth animations, transitions, and object movements across your slides with morph. Find what you are looking for with Zoom. Zoom takes you from one slide to another, in any order you like. Skip ahead or revisit slides without interrupting the flow of your presentation. Run a slideshow with your digital pen asterisk. Use your Surface Pen, or any other pen with a Bluetooth button, to advance your slides. Visio. Kickstart your diagrams. The organization chart, brainstorming, and SDL templates have new starter diagrams to get you up and running quickly. Bring ideas to life. New website templates are ideal for creating a low-fidelity design sketch to present ideas before the actual design process begins. Excel. New functions. Text join, concat, ifs, and more. Let Excel do the work so you don't have to. Publisher. Easily link tasks. Forget about memorizing the ID of the task you want to link to. Instead, select a cell in either the predecessors or successors columns to see a list of all the tasks in your project. Task progress at a glance. Label your timeline bars with task names and dates to quickly communicate project plans and work in progress. Access. Visualize your data with new charts. Choose from 11 new charts, including line, column, and bar charts. Match fields to chart dimensions and preview your changes instantly. Large number, bigint, data type. The large number data type stores a non-monetary, numeric value and is compatible with the SQL underscore Bigen data type in ODBC. This data type efficiently calculates large numbers. Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Add visual impact. Bring visual interest to your documents, worksheets, and presentations by inserting scalable vector graphics, SVG, that have filters applied to them. Break the language barrier. 
Translate words, phrases, and other text selections to another language with Microsoft Translator. Excel Word, PowerPoint, and Visio. Inking is where it's it. Converting to shapes, write out complex math problems, highlight text, and more. Use a finger or a pen. A mouse works too. Excel Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. One click fixes for accessibility issues. The accessibility checker is better than ever with updated support for international standards and handy recommendations to make your documents more accessible. Helpful sounds improve accessibility. Turn on audio cues to guide you as you work. Audio cues are part of sound effects, which you can find in options ease of access. Microsoft Office remains the most popular productivity suite for documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and more, whether as a download software package, or as the cloud-based Microsoft 365 suite. However, a range of alternative competitors have become increasingly attractive, not least because of more price-competitive licensing fees, and some are free to use. However, paying less, or nothing, doesn't necessarily mean that the software is of lower quality, as the open source community can testify. Yet there can be issues with sharing documents between different Office Suite platforms, which can be a real concern. This is why when choosing an alternative to Microsoft Office, you need to be certain of any shortfalls that might limit your use of the software, especially if you need to share or collaborate on documents with other users who have one or more different Office Suites. If you're using the Office alternative as a standalone piece of software there shouldn't be any such issues, but it is something to be mindful about if you end up changing to a different software suite. That said, the best in the Microsoft Office alternatives are generally strong programs with full functionality, and little problem sharing files with other platforms, though few come close to the full functionality of Microsoft 365 with its cloud service bundle that includes OneDrive and Microsoft Teams. LibreOffice vs OpenOffice When it comes to free office software, there are two main choices, LibreOffice and OpenOffice but which is the right one for you. First, it's worth thinking carefully about whether you need desktop office software at all. Provided you have an internet connection, Google Docs, Sheets and Slides might offer everything you need, without the need to install anything, and with the extra bonus that everything you create will be automatically saved to the cloud. No more lost documents, or having to email work to yourself. However, if you write, create spreadsheets or make presentations regularly, you might find that you need some of the more advanced features that you only get in desktop software. If you're in that camp LibreOffice and OpenOffice are two of the best options around. They're both free to download and use, even professionally, and they're open source, which means their code is publicly available. Indeed, they're so similar that you might have a hard time choosing between them, but there are some key differences. Updates One of the biggest differences between Apache OpenOffice and LibreOffice is the frequency of releases. LibreOffice is updated much more frequently than Apache OpenOffice, which means you'll receive new features and bug fixes more quickly. The frequency of updates means there's also more potential for bugs in LibreOffice but any that do appear are likely to be resolved quickly. Tools Both LibreOffice and Apache OpenOffice offer essentially the same set of apps, Writer, Calc, Impress, Draw, Base and Math, but LibreOffice also includes a tool called Charts. As its name implies, this is a small application specifically for creating charts and graphs, ready to be imported into other documents. Handy for presentations Language support. If you're multilingual, it's worth noting that Apache OpenOffice offers more in terms of flexibility when it comes to languages, letting you download additional language patches as plugins. If you choose LibreOffice, you'll need to pick one language at the start and stick with it. Templates. If you often need to make presentations, LibreOffice has the edge in terms of the number, and quality, of slide templates available. Both software suites offer plenty of user-made designs to download, but LibreOffice's selection of pre-installed options is far superior to OpenOffice's. Design 
LibreOffice and Apache OpenOffice are almost identical. The functional differences are very minor, for example, the sidebar in OpenOffice Writer is open by default, whereas in LibreOffice it's closed. LibreOffice does look a little more modern thanks to its larger icons and leaning towards subtle pastel hues, but it's nothing that'll affect your everyday work. Supported file types This is likely to be the biggest deciding factor for many people. Although both LibreOffice and Apache OpenOffice can open and edit native Microsoft formats Docs and XLSX, only LibreOffice is able to save to these formats. If you're going to be sharing documents with people using Microsoft Office, LibreOffice might therefore be the better choice. In computing, Polaris Office by Infraware, Inc. is a paid office suite that runs on platforms such as Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac OS. It allows the editing of Microsoft Office file formats, doc-slash-docs, hwp, ppt-slash-pptx, text, xls-slash-xlsx, and the viewing of PDF files. All files saved in Polaris Office are synchronized with other connected devices, and thus documents are automatically updated to the latest version. It also provides a variety of cloud storage services such as Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. Moreover, Polaris Office has an agent program that allows uploading and downloading documents from a desktop computer to a mobile device. It is available in several languages, Korean, Chinese, Simplified, English, French, German, Japanese, Indonesian, Turkish, Italian, Russian, German, Arabic, Polish, and Spanish. SoftMaker Office is an office suite developed since 1987 by the German company SoftMaker Software GmbH based in Nuremberg. SoftMaker is available as a one-time purchase option in standard and professional editions, as well as a subscription-based version known as SoftMaker Office NX, available as home and universal editions. A freeware version is released as well, under the name of SoftMaker Free Office. Free Office supersedes SoftMaker Office 2006 and 2008, which were released as freeware after originally being available for purchase. Components SoftMaker Office includes Text Maker, a word processor. Plan Maker, a spreadsheet application. Soft Maker Presentations, a presentation graphics application. Basic Maker, a VBA like programming tool, Windows only. The Professional Edition, an Universal Edition of Office NX, additionally includes a Duden Spell Checker, two Duden Dictionaries, four Langenscheidt Dictionaries. Support for Windows Group Policy Functionality SoftMaker Office has similar functionality to other Office suites such as Microsoft Office or LibreOffice, and can also run from USB flash drives and supports integrated reference works. Multi-language spell checking, hyphenation and thesaurus is supported, and it has an integrated five-language translation dictionary, English, German, French, Italian, and Spanish. It has its own native formats, and can read and write file formats of Microsoft Office, Open Document Format, Word Processor Only, RTF and HTML. Support for the Open Document Spreadsheet, ODs, format was added in the anniversary update released for SoftMaker Office 2018. It can export to PDF and EPUB. The user interface is similar to the ribbon utilized in Microsoft Office 2007 and later, and there is an option to use menus and toolbars instead of the ribbon. A dark mode is available. Documents can be opened as tabs in a single window, to allow easy switching between multiple documents. Android version Version of SoftMaker Office, called SoftMaker Office HD, is available for Android tablets, and includes TextMaker, PlanMaker, and SoftMaker. SoftMaker Office HD only has menus and toolbars, rather than allowing the option of menus and toolbars or ribbon. A free version, called SoftMaker Office HD Basic, is also available. WPS Office Software is a leading office productivity suite for PC and mobile devices. With more than 1.2 billion installs, 
WPS Office is a high-performing, yet considerably more affordable solution that is recognized as a preferred alternative to Microsoft Office and is fully compatible and comparable to Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. The WPS Office suite is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux-based PCs as well as Android and iOS. WPS Office Software is a leading internet services and software company. All-in-one mode, document, spreadsheets, presentation, PDF, all tabs in one window like browser. Clue 1 WPS account, work anytime, anywhere. PDF. PDF comment, convert, compress, sing etc. Skin center. Multiple skins to show your personality. Select better templates for you. WPS Office provides customized templates according to user roles and scenarios. High compatibility. High compatibility with Microsoft Office, Google Docs, Adobe PDF. Ultralight. Ultra small installation package, ultra fast startup speed. Language. 8 languages with WPS for PC, 46 languages with WPS for Android. Components. Presentation. Create amazing presentations. Writer. Create and edit documents efficiently. Spreadsheets. All spreadsheet features. PDF. PDF edit, convert, and more. Powerful PDF. PDF editing, PDF to Word, PDF comment, PDF sign, PDF compress, etc. WPS Cloud. 1G free space. Access files anytime from computers and mobile devices. Special features. File repair, picture to text, OCR, backup center, and more. In WPS there is no time period for testing the program, and the same goes for LibreOffice and OpenOffice, these two are totally free. The free version of Polaris has a trial period of 14 days, while the SoftMaker has 30 days. When did Facebook start using hashtags? Facebook introduced hashtags back in 2013, following their rising use and application on other platforms, most notably on Twitter. At the time, Facebook was very keen to push their use on the platform, even prompting Facebook advertisers, specifically, to include them. What's the difference between Facebook and Facebook Lite? Facebook and Facebook Lite are two different apps. Why there are two separate apps? What's the difference between Facebook and Facebook Lite? Quick answer. Short on time. Here is the quick difference comparison. Facebook takes a lot more space than the Lite version, and it offers over 20 features, more than Facebook Lite. For people with a limited data plan or has an old phone, Facebook Lite would suit better. Facebook. The common pre-installed app on many devices, the Facebook app has been here for a long time. With over 5 billion downloads just on Google Play, the app is considered to be one of the most downloaded on the planet. The fast and responsive app sometimes does not work fine on some devices. What is Facebook Lite? Facebook Lite app is a light version of the Facebook app. The app offers all the basic features while occupying less storage and using fewer resources. The app is designed for excuses, such as not enough storage or slow connections. It also supports more OS versions than the original Facebook app. Facebook vs. Facebook Lite Features The main difference between Facebook and Facebook Lite apps comes to the number of features. Facebook Lite offers the basic functionalities, but in total, more than 10 features are not available. The table below compares all the features of both the apps. The text in green means that the particular feature is missing in the opponent. Facebook React, Comment, Tag, and Share Groups Marketplace Memories Pages Events Gaming Jobs Ads Manager Live Videos Mentorship Messenger Kids Most Recent Feed Movies Recent Ad Activity Nearby Friends 
Oculus VR. Find Wi-Fi. Fundraisers. Offers. Weather. Send or request money. Device requests. Crisis response. Facebook Lite. React, comment, tag, and share. Groups. Marketplace. Memories. Pages. Events. Gaming. Jobs. Ads manager. Live videos. Most recent feed. Dark mode. Interface. On the Facebook app, there is the news feed, groups, videos, marketplace, notifications, and main menu. The Facebook Lite app comes with feed, friend requests, messenger, notifications, videos, and main menu buttons. On the top, both offer the search and camera buttons, but you find the messenger button in Facebook and profile button on Facebook Lite. Other than that, as you browse, you find the difference in fonts, font size, buttons, and more. Facebook Lite reminds you of the old Facebook design and layout, so you are an old school and would like to remind yourself of your early days, then Facebook Lite might be the app to try. Storage Facebook app occupies 144 megabytes of storage on Nokia 8 and 153 megabytes on Galaxy Note 10 Plus, while Facebook Lite takes 2.22 megabytes on Nokia 8 and 2.34 megabytes on Galaxy Note 10 Plus. On the iPhone, the Facebook app takes 425 megabytes of storage, whereas Facebook Lite occupies 20 megabytes as of writing this blog post. The primary reasons for the huge difference in storage are images, missing features, saved fonts etc. Using reduced pixels images make a huge difference, while saved fonts also impact. There are many little things which we overlook, but together they make a huge difference. Which one is for you? A few situations where you might want to consider Facebook Lite app. You don't have enough storage. You are using an older version of Android or iOS, and it sometimes freezes or lags while using Facebook app. Your phone or network does not support 3G or 4G. Facebook Lite works good on 2G networks, according to the official blog post on Facebook website. You don't want unnecessary features such as weather, find Wi-Fi, etc. You have a limited data plan. What's the difference between Messenger and Messenger Lite? In 2017, Facebook confused many of its users by releasing a new Messenger Lite app. Well, their mission wasn't to confuse their users but to help them connect faster and cost-effectively with their friends. It's been three years, and users still get confused about the two. The blog post explores the difference and covers Messenger vs. Messenger Lite. Features. The main difference comes to the features both offer. To begin with, when you send a sticker to someone in Messenger Lite, it doesn't animate, while in Messenger, it does. The second significant difference is the stories. Just like Facebook and Lite difference, Messenger Lite does not offer the stories. Furthermore, if you have any pages and you chat with your customers, then Messenger Lite might not be the ideal choice because you don't find any pages option. Messenger Original supports the SMS feature where you enable Messenger to send and receive messages. The option is not available on the Lite version. Moreover, you can't create new groups in Messenger Lite, but it won't stop you from sending and receiving messages in your groups. Finally, the classic chat heads feature is not available on the Messenger Lite app. Those features make Messenger Lite a perfect app for users who want to send and receive messages and make voice and video calls to individuals. I mentioned individuals because you can't make group calls on Messenger Lite. Storage The second big concern is the storage difference. Messenger takes 97 megabytes of storage on Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus whereas Messenger Lite takes about 33 megabytes. There is a difference of 66 megabytes. You can put more than 30 full HD extra photos or more than 20 songs in that storage. On the iPhone, Messenger takes about 90 megabytes of storage, and Messenger Lite takes about 76 megabytes, which is not as reduced as on Android, but still, 
it makes some difference. So, what could be the reason for the reduced size? Of course, the reason for the less storage is fewer features, fonts, and reduced pixels images. All the photos on Messenger Lite are compressed and pixel reduced, which take fewer data to travel to and forth. This, including data, saves install size, data, and cache storage. Marketplace The marketplace is a part of Facebook, then what's it doing in Messenger VS? Messenger Lite Well, the marketplace is a part of Messenger as much as it is of Facebook. In the Messenger app, you find a separate option to manage all the marketplace messages, but Messenger Lite does not offer that. All the conversations are sorted by time and date. Furthermore, you don't have the options to view product details, rate seller, or buyer, and report about the item on Messenger Lite. These options available on Messenger Original make buying and selling easier. The Original Messenger app has two columns with conversations and people on the bottom. Your profile option on the top offers all the settings. You also have the camera, a new group, a new room, and active people option on the top. Messenger app can be quite confusing to navigate because of so many options. Messenger Lite has an edge because it is super easy to navigate. Messenger Lite has three columns, chat, friends and settings. You get a few options, including active status, notifications, switch account manager storage, etc., in account settings. The username stuff is limited to Messenger. Which one should you use? Messenger Lite was developed for slow internet connections, but many significant websites have found many benefits, and they have recommended using Messenger Lite no matter what connection or phone. But, if you want a proper answer to this question, then here is the list for Messenger Lite users. Use the Messenger Lite if any of the below is correct. You don't have enough storage. You are using an older version of Android such as KitKat or Lollipop. Your phone or SIM does not support 3G or 4G. You have a limited data plan. Adobe Software List, which apps do you need? The Adobe Software List is a giant one that covers every creative need. Whether you're a graphic designer, web designer, photographer, illustrator, marketing professional or working in the TV and movie industry, it contains most of the tools your profession considers industry standard. But most Adobe software requires a subscription, and you have the choice of subscribing to just a single app or the whole Creative Cloud suite. 01. Adobe Photoshop. Used for, image editing and manipulation, photo retouching, graphic design, web and app prototyping, 3D modeling. Pros, feature-rich, powerful. Cons, complex, big learning curve. Available for, Mac, Windows, iPad. If you want to edit images, this is the industry standard, so much so, that the word Photoshop has become synonymous with image editing in common parlance. But tweaking photos isn't all that Photoshop does, it's also a fully-fledged graphics editor. Photoshop can be used, for example, to edit and compose raster images, graphics, and text in multiple layers, edit and render text and vector graphics, and create and edit 3D graphics and video. This wide range of capabilities means that Photoshop is not just used by photographers and photo retouchers, but also by digital artists, graphic designers, and art directors, and even, increasingly, by 3D designers and VFX artists. It's important to note that Photoshop works with raster graphics, in contrast to Illustrator which works with vector graphics. 02. Adobe Illustrator. Used for, illustration, designing vector graphics. Pros, feature-rich, industry standard. Cons, expensive compared to Sketch or Affinity Designer. Available for, Mac, Windows. While Photoshop has wide and ever-expanding capabilities, Illustrator is much more focused on a specific tasks. It's essentially a drawing program based on vector graphics, which contain less detail than raster graphics and are infinitely scalable. As the name might suggest, 
Illustrator is most commonly used by artists, illustrators, and graphic designers, to create everything from simple graphics, such as logos, icons, and infographics, to complex illustrations, and everything in between. 03. Adobe After Effects. Used for, VFX, Motion Graphics, Compositing. Pros, Feature Rich, Integration with Cinema 4D. Cons, not sophisticated enough for full movie production. Available for, Mac, Windows. After Effects is a popular tool for visual effects, motion graphics, and compositing. Although you wouldn't use it to create an entire movie, it might be used by a creative studio to create the kind of simple animations you'd feature on a website, in an explainer video, or on a credit sequence, for example. After Effects is also used in the post-production process of filmmaking and television, for tasks such as keying, tracking, and compositing, and creating visual effects such as explosions and lightning strikes. As well as being smoothly integrated with other Adobe apps, it also plays nicely with Maxon's 3D application Cinema 4D. 04. Adobe XD Adobe XD is used to prototype websites and apps. Used for, web and app prototyping. Pros, starter plan free, available for Windows, unlike Sketch. Cons, Sketch remains the industry standard. Available for, Mac, Windows, with iOS, and Android app for testing. Launched a few years back as Adobe's rival to Sketch, Adobe XD is a vector-based UX tool for prototyping web and mobile apps. In other words, you don't create the whole app in XD, but use it for visualizing the interface and defining how all the different parts function and relate to each other. This makes it easier to get everything working correctly, before you embark on the final coding. Note that XD's starter plan is free, and you don't need a Creative Cloud subscription to use it. 05. Adobe InSign CC. Used for, Desktop Publishing. Pros, Industry Standard. Cons, Learning Curve. Available for, Mac, Windows. InSign is a page layout tool that's used primarily for print, but also has digital publishing capabilities. The industry standard tool for the publishing industry, it's typically used by graphic designers and production artists to create posters, flyers, brochures, magazines, newspapers, presentations, books, and ebooks. 06. Adobe Lightroom. Used for image organization and editing. Pros superior organization features cons not as powerful as photoshop for image editing available for windows mac ios android lightroom is a family of tools for image organization and image manipulation its strength lies primarily in the former and is a good tool for a photo studio or photographer that needs handle large numbers of images it doesn't have all the image editing features offered by Photoshop, but that does make for a simpler interface that's easier to use for standard tasks. Also note that Lightroom's edits are always non-destructive. This means both the original image and the edits you've applied to it are saved separately, so it's easy to undo changes if things don't turn out how you want it. 07. Adobe Premiere Pro. Used for, video editing. Pros powerful, integration with other Adobe apps. Cons, steep learning curve. Available for, Windows, Mac. Premiere Pro is a comprehensive video editing tool, based on a visual timeline, that's used widely in the film and TV industry, as well as by YouTubers and marketing and design studios, to edit everything from commercials and music videos to TV series and feature-length movies. Recent new features include Auto Reframe, which applies intelligent reframing to your footage, keeping the action inside the frame for different aspect ratios, and the ability to snap graphic elements to guides, to each other, or to tracked items. Premiere Pro is often used in conjunction with other creative cloud apps including After Effects, Audition and Photoshop. It's quite a complex tool to learn, 
and for this reason Adobe has recently released a more lightweight video editing app, Premiere Rush, for beginners and more casual users. 08. Adobe Spark. Used for, creating graphics, web pages, and short videos. Pros, simple to use. Cons, basic tool. Available for, Mac, Windows, iOS, Android. Adobe Spark is a suite of apps for creating graphics, web pages, and short videos for social media, easily and quickly. It's aimed at marketing and social media professionals, as well as amateurs and beginners who want to create cool content for Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, but don't have the time to learn more complicated software such as Photoshop and Illustrator. 09. Adobe Fresco. Used for, digital art. Pros, simple, intuitive interface. Cons, super expensive on subscription model. Available for, iOS version 12.4 or later. Adobe Fresco is a digital art app, which mimics some of the best elements of other fine art programs for iPad. It combines the expression and power of Photoshop brushes, with the precision of vector brushes. The live brush function allows you to paint with watercolors and oils that blossom, blend, smear, and smudge just like in real life. Fresco has a simple and intuitive interface that's great for beginners and pros alike. 09. Adobe Rush. Used for, video editing. Pros, emphasis on ease and speed, upload directly to social media accounts. Cons, not a heavy-duty video editor. Available for, Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android. Adobe Premiere Rush is an all-in-one, cross-platform video editing software that processes and uploads video clips quickly, ideal for social media content creators. The app supports video cropping, resizing, rotating and color correction, plus a host of sound and sequence editing features. All content is saved in the cloud, ideal for editing across multiple devices, and there's an auto-sync option, which makes it even easier. Rush is designed to make it super simple to edit and upload content directly to social media platforms, so it isn't heavy duty, but its full integration with Premiere Pro means it doesn't need to be. 10. Adobe Dimension. Used for, mocking up, compositing and rendering photorealistic 3D images. Pros, unique, easy to use. Cons, photorealism can look fake if not done with care. Available for, Mac and Windows. Adobe Dimension is a tool for mocking up, compositing and rendering photorealistic 3D images based on 2D and 3D models, photos, and textures you have imported from elsewhere, including Adobe Stock. It's used by graphic designers to, for example, create product mockups, brand visualizations, and packaging designs. The main advantage is being able to create scenes that look like photographs, without having to organize a photo shoot. 11. Adobe Dreamweaver. Used for, creating websites. Pros, no need to learn code. Cons, more complex to use than other, more recently released web builders. Available for, Mac, Windows. First created in 1997, Dreamweaver is Adobe's tool for people who want to build websites without learning how to code. It was cutting edge at the time, but nowadays there are many alternative tools that offer similar capabilities, not least Adobe's own MuCC. The main reason to use Dreamweaver in 2019, then, is that you've used it before, but for those who are unfamiliar with it, there's not really a compelling reason.